okay obviously the isolation of surfactants came from the different classes of surfactant that is the amphoteric surfactant the cationic surfactant and the anionic surfactant that is their own category of selection of um, surfactants for CeraVe face the best of washes. this video is on face washes like um a little bit of awareness i'll still call it a little bit because for me it hasn't gotten to the point that i wanted to get to about the awareness especially here in africa nigeria to be more specific that awareness of face washes people still use soaps on their faces yes <laughs> even though there are some face soaps example let's say dove right dove could actually be classified under a body and face so but most of the soaps if not 80 percent of the soaps out there are meant for body i'm a soap maker myself and my body soaps are not really going to be friendly on the face for all skin types probably people with oily skin can actually scale through using um body soaps on their faces but people that have normal to combination normal oily sorry normal to dry or combination skin like mine might have issues when they use soaps on their face for long especially dry skin don't even go there and so therefore the culture of face wash is gradually being initiated especially at a particular age when you are above 30 honestly your lipid barrier has really really dropped and you will need the help of face washes with proper ph and that is why it is good for you to buy from brands that are quite credible am i talking too much come on welcome back to my channel if you see this face for the first time my name is asma Zakari. i'm a cosmetic from Lito and also an educator based in nigeria but I've got to be specific. All right, without too much wasting of your time any longer, let's dive in. Okay, so um, the first face wash I'm going to talk about. Okay, these face washes are actually very popular in Nigeria. Mm, they're also popular, even though they're international brand with one local brand. Yes. Um, CeraVe face wash slash cleansers. They have about six variants. Wow. When I looked up, because at the beginning it was a little bit confusing to me, but afterwards and I realized that these guys have about six variants. They have the ceramide foaming oil free cleanser, they have the ceramide hydrating cream to foam cleanser, they have hydrating foaming oil cleanser, they have ceramide hydrating cleanser for dry skin, then SA soothing cleanser with ceramides then blemish control cleanser for mild acne prone skin that's like six but then i'm not going to sit down and start <laughs> classifying them due to their surfactant value one by one and putting everything together there's something i noticed all in all yeah even though they have different formulas sort of different similar formulas i know that kind of <laughs> formula ish um but this was what i noticed their surfactants of choices where the isolation of in the surfactants category. came oh. from the different classes of surfactant that is the amphoteric surfactant the cationic surfactant and the anionic surfactant that is their own category of selection of um surfactants for CeraVe face washes slash cleansers now i noticed that their selection um in, in, included sodium lauryl sarcosinate that is an anionic surfactant um there's bentrimonium chloride that's a cationic surfactant there's also bentrimonium metosulfate that is also a cationic surfactant and then i noticed there was um cocomidopropylene hydrozyl sultan now those were their own selection so the selection of surfactant came within the ranges of the amphoteric surfactant the anionic surfactant and the cationic surfactant that is it about CeraVe face cleansers then the next one i picked up on was the simple face wash i have a video where i review the ingredient list of simple face wash proper so um their own selection of um surfactant i noticed was in the three category of the amphoteric surfactant um anionic surfactant and also non-ionic surfactant so their selection i saw um under the amphoteric was the coco middle propylene betaine then the sodium laureth sulfate and then the dicyl coco glucoside now let me come back to sodium laureth sulfate there are a lot of um controversy surrounding sodium laureth sulfate due to the fact 
it has a very high um, cleansing ability so people um, that belong to the group of dry skin type might find using um, a cleanser with sodium laureth sulfate as too drying to their skin is it clear um, so going on to the next one is Cetaphil face wash. One of my friends was asking me what I had against Cetaphil and I'm like, I have nothing actually. I have nothing, honestly speaking. And um, Cetaphil face wash, I noticed that their own surfactant was among two categories, which is the Afoteric surfactant and the Anionic surfactant. And the Afoteric surfactant was the Cocoa Middle Propylene Betaine and then the Sodium Loreal Sarcosinate, just like the any ionic surfactant in CeraVe. So you see their similarity ish. Um, so the next one is Larache Posay face wash. Larache Posay face wash for me it was looking almost exactly like simple face wash. Yes, like the installation of um, surfactant were exactly the same as simple face wash meaning they had the selection of um, uh, surfactant in three categories that is the amphoteric um ionic, ionic and then the non-ionic which is stated as follows cocoa middle properly betaine sodium laureth sulfate and dicyl cocoa glucoside that looks alike with simple <laughs> that's for larash posi then there's this guy this boss <laughs> which is the panoxyl acne face wash obviously panoxyl acne face wash is not for everybody um it is a face wash that contains benzoyl peroxide even though benzoyl peroxide of recent has been having a back and forth i remember yesterday first day i watched um is it the cosmetic chemist she was breaking down in fact she almost wanted to turn upside down <laughs> like she was breaking down the whole concept of the benzene in the benzoyl peroxide because you know what i notice on this space like i respect everybody to be honest with you but there's something i notice even from reputable personalities people that i respect on this space like they are doing that but that does not mean i still don't respect them but i'm trying to say to people like with for me <laughs> with integrity ish like from what i'm seeing online they bring up a product and then in the bit of trying to sell out that product they sort of begin to try like kind of top down on an existing product in order to bring their own in see for me this guy is big enough for everyone bring your own dermatologist uh, brand uh, celebrity brand cosmetic chemist brand aesthetician brand as long as there is proper research and there is no toxic substances in that is cruelty free there is truthfulness in that brand for me just coming from if there's no if there's no competition hmm? I feel that whatever it is you're doing is not even worth doing. So for me, I think competition pushes everything forward. Competition for me brings visibility. So you don't need to condemn somebody's product in order to sell your own. I remember seeing um, a product called Easy Geology or something like that. And you could see that their marketing point was they kept saying no benzoyl peroxide, no benzoyl peroxide. Guy, bring in your product. You don't need to talk down on anybody's already product people have eyes they can choose and that is why um my last video i was talking about how not to read ingredient list meaning that products with their percentage is stated for me a percentage of active stated for me is the best like is the best so it gives you choice and nobody will just easily manipulate you like that okay i'm talking too much panoxyl acne face wash all right this is an acne face wash and honestly most acne prone skin are oily and no wonder panoxyl face wash is sort of harsh yeah to um a lot of skin types but let me tell you why you know um most of the time the bacteria causing acne they tend to stick on the skin and what makes it worse is mostly oily skin that's why it's almost looking like most oily skin type or you have acne breakout flare up whatever now this is their own selection of um surfactant i noticed their own selection, selection of surfactant was even a little bit exaggerated now listen to me they have dicyl cocoa glucoside that is in, this, in the category of the non-ionic surfactant then they have cocoa middle propylene betaine that's an amphoteric surfactant and then they have sodium laurel sulfate and then potassium laurel sulfate now sodium laurel sulfate is that um <laughs> um surfactant that also has plenty of drama due to its high cleansing ability you know so but sodium laurel 
sulfate being derived from, derived from sodium laurel sulfate has a better reputation. Are we clear? That is, there are two types of strong anionic surfactants that mostly is advisable to be used maybe for more of domestic um, cleansers like your hand washes you know um, dishwashers but they could also be incorporated into our skin and hair care products but the problem with them is that they have very high cleansing ability that's the controversy surrounding it and those are the um, SLS and SLES now SLS is the sodium laurel sulfate which is present in your panoxy face wash in the panoxy face wash right then the derivative is sodium laurel sulfates right but you know when something is giving birth from something <laughs> you understand some people would tend to still chastise it but that's by the way panoxy has sodium laurel sulfate it also has potassium laurel sulfate now while i'm going through the ingredient list i now notice mineral oil which it makes sense because um with sodium laurel sulfate and potassium laurel sulfate you have very high stripping ability so mineral so um, oil being a very strong occlusive can help the skin to calm down soothing properties right in as much as it's also an, an occlusive and placing it in that kind of mix i would also say it will also give a little bit of emollient um property so that is it about panels so for me i look at panels um face wash like something that you cannot just jump into it i prefer it coming from recommendation it's not a careless face wash that you can just use daily without having problem of course it's even written clearly there they said acne face wash so you cannot just have a clean face that does not have acne and you go and start buying panoxyl obviously talking too much about panoxyl so um coming down to last but not the least probably i was saving the last for the best now products from my own product brand as well as the curry cosmetics popularly known as A to Z Signature. Now, I have three categories of face washes in my own product line. This is with Clove. Like, okay, let me say, state clearly. Um, in the past, I used to use Actis in my face washes, but right now, I don't. For me, I feel face wash should be what it is for washing the face. If you want to enjoy any benefit of any active, for me, I believe you will enjoy it better in a stay-on product. Example, you want to enjoy the benefit of niacinamide, you want to enjoy the benefit of salicylic acid, you want to enjoy the benefit of some ceramides, peptides, I feel they will be much more beneficial in stay-on product. Face washes should be like one of the most cheapest or affordable product that is used for just cleansing the face and to me i'm in africa nigeria like i told you these actives are very um, expensive and that is why these other face washes that have actives they are on the pricey side to be honest with you very very pricey okay now this is my own um one of my own face wash with clove so basically i use clove extract because of the eugenol property of clove that can help to calm down skin that has acne or unnecessary breakout so this is it and in this formula i have the selection of my um surfactants are obviously in the category of the amphoteric surfactant and the anionic surfactant so in this formula i have the cocoa mineral propylene betaine i have aos alpha olefin sulfonate and then i have sci that is the um sodium coca acetonate right i also noticed sodium coca acetonate as one of the surfactants to used in sera vs i noticed it too as well now this guy is a very simple one this guy i infused it with turmeric i don't know if you can see the color from my screen and the um surfactant of choice here are just two cocoa medial propylene betaine and then alpha olefin sulfonates known as aos then this one the last but not the least i will show you the, the, all of this i'll show you their samples and the manufacturer obviously so i have samples that i'll show you here now this one is plain actually and i formulated it with two surfactant cocoa medial propylene betaine and um sodium cocai acetonate just those two now let me show you how they look the other the, this one that i just dropped this one here let me show you this is it here this is how it looks right okay this is how it looks at least i have the privilege of showing you my own products now this is the one with the clove right and this is how it looks this is slightly thicker i like to give this to people that are acne prone right this is thicker than this one the you can see the rheology you can see the movement and the last but not the least is the turmeric one so this is how this looks like 
Okay, can you see? So basically, these are my three types of face wash. This one is the plain one, the one I told you with SCI and Coco Midropropylene Betaine. This one has SCI, um, AOS, and Coco Midropropylene Betaine. And the reason is because this one, due to the benefit of the clove, the original benefit, I told you I don't use active. It is, I like to recommend it for acne prone skin, right? Then this, the one with the turmeric, I like to recommend it for dry skin types. Then this plain one, there's this one, it is for all skin types. So if you're in Nigeria, if you're even abroad and you don't mind paying the huge amount for delivery fees, thank you. I really appreciate your support. But if you're in Nigeria, we deliver everywhere in Nigeria. If I even worldwide, it's just that, like I said, the worldwide is sort of on the pricey side. But if you want to support your girl, I would really, really appreciate it. And if you want to learn how to formulate face washes as like a pro, from a pro, we have classes that involves the formulation of face washes. Meanwhile, if you want me to dope some of these favorite face washes of yours, you would have to join my membership site of YouTube and I'll be dropping those doped um, formula, recipe, cosmetic signs on my advanced section of membership so thank you so much already i have some videos on my membership channel already go there and watch i have a hair conditioner video i have um a base cream video from the scratch much updated ish you know i already have one here and some other videos they are there waiting for you just join the membership and then you will have access to those um uh, videos with even shout out too as well on my channel so thank you so much please don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel like my video share my videos and hope to see you in another video if you like um content like this let me know in the comment section so that i can bring you more 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 so that it can help you with your selection of um products because influencers have cut up people's head so it's products everywhere some influencers have cobalt like I don't want to go there but that's by the way so that it just becomes a guide there are so many information out there but face wash is a very simple and general skincare for everyone. So thank you so much. Bye. -bye.